In this video, we're going to answer a community member's question. And the question was basically about enemy generators. So in other words, they're picturing something like out of Gauntlet, if you've ever played Gauntlet, where the enemies continuously spawn from a particular location. And the only way to stop them from continuously respawning is if you blow up their spawner, uh, whatever their object is for the spawner. And he was wondering, hey, you know, is this something that we can do in Max today? And the answer is yes, we can absolutely do, do that. It's a combination of behaviors. And I've touched on both behaviors in the past individually, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to see how we can combine behaviors in a way that gives us the effect that we would like to see. So I've set up a little scene here and I did not go through a lot of trouble on this one. Uh, so bear with me if it doesn't look pretty. Please excuse the crudity of this model. I didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it. I'm sorry about that, but let me just show you what I have in mind. It's also going to be a lot of gunfire. So if you've got your mic or your uh, headset up really loud, I want to touch that down a bit just for a moment. All right. So let me show you the setup that I've done here and then I'll explain how it works. Okay. So I've got myself a, a very big gun. I'm going to take that big gun and we go down to the place where the zombies are spawning. So you can see them spawning here. Now there's a bunch of green ones and they're coming from the green tent. And the blue ones are coming from the team. Several other ones here. Yikes. And I'm going to kill off a few of these. Again, sorry about all the gunfire. Let me reload. And I'm going to blow up that uh, green tent. And then what's going to happen is the zombies will continuously spawn from the tan tent, but not from the green tent. So that's so now there's a green guy. I'm sure you are not gonna respawn. Reload again. Be patient with me, zombies. This one takes a while. Right. So the blue zombies are going to spawn again. The green zombies, they're done, their place has been destroyed. Tan tent. Any more blue zombies. I didn't set up a particle for the tent, tan tent, so that's what I mean by kind of a rush job. But you get the idea. And so no more zombies spawn because they blew up their spawners. So let me show you how to do that. So we are back in the scene. Now the first thing to know is that the clone behavior, which is the spawn behavior, has to be triggered. So I put a trigger zone here that I, I knew I would be walking through this zone and activating those spawns, right? Um, and ignore the fire, don't worry. <laughs> All right, so the tents are the spawners in this case, and I put the clone entity on there. Now, I don't want to go through this line by line necessarily. I'm just going to point out some of the highlights, and this will encourage you to go watch my other videos, right? Uh, but let me just show you quickly. So uh, spawn quantity is how many of the zombies are going to spawn each time. The range obviously is how close to the spawner. Uh, lifespan, I set it to a thousand. And the reason here is if you look in the description, it says inter eternal lifespan. So in other words, it, they would continuously spawn until the tents were destroyed. Those are the kind of the the big ticket items really uh the rest is fairly self-explanatory you know the clone health just you know what kind of health should the clone have um just it should be based off of whatever it's cloning and then the recycle spawn we wanted that on the number of events I, again i said it to 100 you know like i said it depends on the game and what you're trying to do uh, respawn intervals just how often is it going to be respawning uh, so in other words if i killed off say three of the five then in seven minutes i would expect to see the other uh two show up and then um i'm sorry the other three show up because there's still two remaining and then uh see this is the zombie that's being spawned which is z4 it's just the name of the the character um formation this has to do with uh if you if you're going to do rows this is kind of new to this behavior. This is something I wasn't expecting, but if uh, I did a random spawn, so they just kind of spawned randomly around within that radius. But if you choose rows, 
then you can determine how many of the zombies would appear in each row. I haven't tried it out, so explore that and see what it looks like. Um, obviously, the tan tent is set up basically the same way. So the way that we get it to stop spawning is by destroying the tent. Now, the tent has to have a health. We're going to go into, well, first things first, we're going to make sure that always active is ticked. That's a good idea anytime you're going to be away from the object. Uh, you want that ticked so it's always producing or doing the behavior that it's meant to do. And then down here in the developer settings, if you look at the strength of the object, the default is like one, which basically makes it indestructible. Don't ask me why, it just does. If you set that to a number other than one, then it'll it'll become destructible. It has 500 hit points, essentially. And so that is what allowed me to, to destroy the object in part. There's another part to that, and that is the destroy object behavior. So this behavior is sitting over here on a nearby object, right? And it's just waiting for the tent to be destroyed. So you can see here, I've referenced the name of the tent in the object name. Um, I also referenced the particle there. Um, and that was really just for me experimenting with like destroying the particle or not destroying the particle. Ultimately, I went with just keeping it going. Uh, but the health monitor check, that's really the important part. So it's monitoring the health of the tent that it's been given. And when the, the health of that tent reaches zero, that's when it destroys the object. And then that would uh, make the tent go away. The tent is what has the, the clone entity behavior on it. So if the tent's destroyed, the clone entity stops. So combining these behaviors is the way that we achieve the more complex scenarios and goals that we're trying to do. Um, but that's it. That is uh, the scenario that was asked for. I thought it would just be a, a nice break from breaking down individual behaviors one by one. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something new. Uh, if you did, please be sure to click the like button down below. That helps the channel out a lot. If you're new here and you'd like to learn more, just subscribe. I do new videos all the time. I'm happy to do requests like this anytime I think I can. I can't always answer every question. I don't know everything, but I, I'll try for sure, for sure if I can. Uh, and then lastly, you know, if you'd like a notification for whenever a new video is posted, just click the bell icon and that'll let you know when a new video is ready. Uh, thanks so much for watching all the way through. I hope uh, you learned something. I hope you were entertained and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Hey, don't forget, there's a written guide for every behavior, including ones I haven't yet uh, covered on this channel. And if you want to learn some more, why don't you check out this video next?